Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from Creative Pad Media. In this tutorial, we'll be seeing how to use AI to turn an ordinary image like this into something that looks way more visually appealing like this. We'll be taking the help of Pencil AI's AI Portrait Tool, which is something I've shown a couple of times in my videos in the past. We'll also be using just a bit of Photoshop to finish the job. So let's get started. Once you've created your account with Pencil AI, you will get 20 credits, so you'll be able to use this tool for free. And you are on Pencil, the link is given in the description and also the image that we'll be using is given in the description. So once you are on Pencil, you can go to Tools and go to AI Portrait. If you haven't seen my detailed video on this AI Portrait tool, you can see that the link is hovering on top. You can watch it later, but that's where I explain it in a more detailed manner, but this is still a very simple tool to follow because all you do is you upload your original photograph here and then we'll just simply be writing prompts to generate the AI image. Now, one very important thing, you can see that in this particular original shot that we have, her entire body can be seen. This tool, in my experience, uh, because I've done a lot of trial and error, it doesn't really work very well when you upload the entire body in the original shot. So what we're going to do is we are going to crop this and turn it into almost like a head shot because then it works better. So let's do that. All right. So for this, you can use any editing tool out there. So we've got the cropped image with us and now let's upload this image. So the moment you do that, you're going to see that it presents you some options. One will be of choosing the gender. So she's a female. So we're going to select woman. Uh, in style, either you can select photographic or I've just found no style actually gives the best results, okay? Now, in the last tutorial, if you've seen my detailed AI portrait tutorial, we mainly worked with a lot of templates here, right? So we just clicked on the template, it kind of makes the prompt on its own, and it even starts the generation process on its own. This time, however, let's say we have an objective. So we are not just turning this into any other image. The original pose of, was that of her meditating, so let's just take an example. Let's say that maybe she needs an image of her meditating for her business or any other thing. And it should look much better than what it already is. And instead of going to a photographer, she wants to do it using AI. So that would be our objective, okay? So what we need is we need to write in a prompt to describe that image. So we're going to assume that let's say she wants to turn this shot into something where she's meditating outdoors in a very beautiful and serene environment. So how can we do that? Well, we're going to take the help of another tool, AI tool, which is ChatGPT. So let's go to ChatGPT. All right, this happens very rarely, but as you can see, ChatGPT right now is not working. So another alternative that you can use is Gemini AI, which is by Google, and you can type your query here. Or what I've done in this case is ChatGPT on my phone was working. So you can see in front of you that I basically use this. And what I wrote was prompt for a woman doing meditation in serene outdoor environment. And finally, we got this particular prompt which was generated by ChatGPT. So what we can do now is copy this and we can just go back here and type or paste this here rather. Now, one very important thing, AI struggles a lot with fingers, okay? So you really don't want the fingers to be too uh, prominent on the hand and the feet. So what we can do is here, uh, we can do here is that you can see here her hands resting on her knees. This is what ChatGPT gave us. What I'll probably change this to is and her hands are in the prayer position because that will be easier for the AI to generate, okay? Because I tried this before and when her hands were, uh, you know, on her knees, there were a lot of issues with the fingers and I was not able to solve that till the time I just changed it to this. So that is sometimes uh, the downside of using AI. It's still not good with hands and feet, but I think this should be fine now. So we're going to now hit generate and let's wait for the results here all right so you can see that got a pretty good looking short hair no problem with the hands and the feet so what we can do right now is a couple of options one is because we will at least try this two or three times the only thing here that i don't like is somehow the proportion of her body and face doesn't look that great and of course as you can see here uh, this part near the ankles, it is going to mess that up. Okay, that's not a problem. That's where later on Photoshop will come into play. However, right now, I want to show you something very important. Okay, which is let me right now just hit download. It's going to download this particular image. There's this option where you see it says enhance right now for a long time when I was using this tool, I actually did not know what 
this did and i used to ignore it because i thought maybe it'll just increase the resolution or something like that make it slightly sharper but no when i actually did use this it completely changes the changes the shot to something really really more realistic okay so just see if i hit enhance now and just keep an eye on the changes that it produces it just makes the person look much more real all right, so you can see right now that is a massive change. It really sharpens things, but it not only sharpens it, you can see that her eyes also are now open, the face and the hair look much more realistic with much more detail, right? So if I just download this image and if we compare this side by side, you can clearly see there's a huge difference. However, still, I'm because I'm not happy with the original generation, let's just uh, hit generate once more. You need to do it a couple of times just to get a decent result. So... Let's wait for this. All right, so this time we've got this result, but again, you can see the hands are too small and the feet, of course, there's too much distortion there. Let's just try this once more. So we've got this image. This time is slightly from another angle. This also looks good. Let's see if it can fix this issue with the hands when we hit enhance. So let's wait for the results here. So you can see that that even improved the hands a lot, right? So this button here is very important. It really, really makes it much more real. We don't even mind if what it does to the face is not exactly to our liking because after we are happy with the final result, we will be doing a face swap, okay? So I think I like this image because it has more depth since it's clicked slightly from the right angle also looks really nice and real. The face also looks very similar to the original face. And I don't mind if it has not generated the legs here because we will be taking this inside Photoshop and we will do it there. But as long as the overall image looks fine, this is gonna be the winner till now. But, but just let's try this once more. You never know, we get third time lucky and maybe we get something better. But if not, we'll use this image and take it inside Photoshop. So let's just hit generate once more. All right, so this is the third result we've got. And I actually really like this because even if you see uh, the face and the body, the proportions are very nice. And she looks very, very similar to the original shot. And I think I'm going to probably stick with this version, okay? Uh, what we will have to do is it has messed up the feet here. We will actually be cropping this a bit and generating the rest of it using Photoshop because Photoshop is much better at these things, okay? So right now, all we've we can do is just hit enhance. Maybe we'll fix some of these issues, but we're going to take this shot inside Photoshop. All right, so this time using enhance didn't make that much of a difference, but I think this is fine. We are still going to download this. And before we take it over to Photoshop, what we're going to do is that we are going to do a face swap, even though the face already looks very real, very real, but there's no harm. Now, actually, to be frank, the moment I hit download, so there must have been a lag, but now you can see that it has actually uh, enhance the photograph. So it didn't really enhance it that time, uh, but now it has, and I think yeah, this looks good. So let's just hit download once more and let's do the face swap. So in order to do the face swap, we'll use uh, Pencil's own face swapping tool. We can go down here under tools, you'll find face swap. Let's add the target image, which is the AI one. And let's add the new face image, which is going to be the original one. And you can see, even if you see this and this without the swap, that really looks very close to her, so that's good. But I think after the face swap, it should probably improve. So let's wait for the results. And you can see that it, now it's definitely very close. Let's look at the nose also. It's so similar. And overall, I think now this really looks like her. So now what we're going to do is now we're going to take this inside Photoshop. And here we just need to fix a couple of things, which is that if I zoom in, mainly again, we're just focusing on the hands here. So you can see her, one of her fingers is cut off. Like I said, AI is not very good with fingers, but we can just take any selection tool and either you can try to run this on an empty prompt, but some, when you're looking to generate something specific, I just don't mind typing in finger and hopefully it should be able to do the job. So let's wait for this. All right, so for some reason, when I was typing in the word finger, it was, Photoshop was not running it, it was saying that I'm violating some kind of guidelines. Uh, so I don't know what happened there, but um, I just then ran it on the NT prompt and I think this looks good. Let's just see the three variations. And yeah, I think the second one probably looks the closest. So I think now we are happy with the hands. Now what we can do is we can, we just need to correct this. So one way is you can see both the feet don't look good, right? So what we can do in this case is instead of using generative fill, because even that is going to struggle because generative fill itself is an AI tool, right? So what we can do here is 
we can use another AI tool which usually just slightly works better than the tools which generate specific parts, okay, which is the generative expand tool. And how that works is I'm just, I've just taken the crop tool and I'm just cropping it right up till here where the, both the feet are out of the frame. So I'm just going to crop this. Then again, just click to get the canvas back and we're going to uncrop this, take it down, okay. And then next to fill, we're going to select generative expand and let's see if this can fix this issue. I don't even mind because last time when I used it, what it did was it just produced a little bit of grass and some flowers around that part hiding her feet, which is also not bad, okay? So even if it can fake the result in a good way, that's not a problem. So let's wait for the results here. All right, so you can see the first result, she's wearing what seem to be like socks, probably not the best uh, result, but something like this, right? Now this starts to look better. Let's see the third result. I think even this is not bad. What we can do is let's just uh, generate this once more and see the results. This time we've got this, this, and this. So for the third time, because obviously this second set of results is not good, let's also, along with generative expand, we can also type in a prompt here in this window, okay? So what we can do is we can just type in grass. So maybe it's gonna get the clue that we want that area to be filled up with the blades of grass so her feet are slightly hidden. All right, so this is the first result. I think this looks really nice. So it's kind of covered that up. It's not bad, except for this part which is coming right here. Uh, no. So I think I'm happy with the first result. This looks fine. Let's just, one final time, let's just type in long grass, okay, and flowers. Really trying to hide that. All right, let's see the result. This is the first one. The this actually looks really nice. The flowers are not a problem because we can, they're not looking good, but we can remove them very easily. But I think, yeah, I was going for something like this because now if you see the front uh, blades of grass are even blurred. So it really looks very real because, you know, that's how depth of field works. And if you look at the third one, this is also not bad. I think this one looks the best out of all. This one or this one. I think the flowers really, uh, you know, add something to the shot. So I think we're going to probably stick, I think, to this one. I think this one looks cleaner and more real. So we've got this. Now, one thing that I would probably like to do is that I think this would look better if her eyes are closed. So what we can do is let's just create a new layer. Let's stamp everything onto this layer using the shortcut control command alt, uh, alt option shift plus E. And let's just select both the eyes and let's use generative fill to close them. So we're just gonna zoom in slightly and let's use our lasso tool to make the selection. And we can just type in the prompt closed eyes. Let's see the result here. All right, so I think that did a pretty good job. Let's check the three variations. This one looks fine. This one doesn't look that real. And this is also fine. Let's zoom out and see between one and three. So this is the third one. And this is the first one. I think this looks more real because you can clearly see the highlights are being reflected, okay? This is really nice. So you can see that we went from this shot, which had noise and just didn't look good at all, to something outdoors like this. It did involve a bit of work, a bit of trial and error, but that's how AI is these days. Nothing is always going to work with one click. But using the different AI tools, we were able to achieve our result. So if in case this video helped you out, do give it a like. And if you want to follow all my experiments with the different AI tools out there, then don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time.